Most of what I do has a grounding in education. There is a lesson to be learned. <laughs> I'm not sure what the lesson is. So, so please don't, please do not think for one minute that it's what I've been teaching students as a teacher educator. And please don't do it tomorrow. But I think it does raise the question of, you know, whilst we've been talking about some fairly heavy stuff about social reformers and so on, we should have some fun. So let me finish on, um, this is the last word here, I promise. So when I was thinking through, like this is, I've been teaching for over four years, I think if I were to distill down what I think good teaching is really about, this is probably, tentatively, I'm saying this, and you've got to tell me that there's some glaring gaps here. I think you do need to know stuff. I think we do need smart people to be teachers, but I don't think we all have to be brilliant. I don't think we all have to be a genius. But we've got to be a bit smart, we've got to be a bit switched on. And I think particularly because of ICT now, where there's so much information that's available to our students, having all the facts is no longer a key role, I think, for a good teacher in the 21st century. Students can get, they'll have many more facts than we've got, in fact, available to us. But we do need to know stuff, which your conversation earlier about being experts. I think you do have to have a bag of tricks, and someone over here earlier today said this, you need to, well, I'll try this, and if this isn't working, this particular group of students, I know, I'll try something else. So you've got this little repertoire of things you can bring out and try when the going gets tough and things aren't seen, or you're seeing the students glaze over, then you think, oh, I need to go to plan B or plan C. So having a repertoire of tricks, I think, is pretty important. Um, in the one before, I just mentioned, um, to stop everybody getting bored. And I think it's important to put yourself in there as well. I mentioned before about being stuck in a groove. I think it's important to not get bored teaching, to stimulate, find something that stimulates you um, as you move through. I think the third thing that's really, really important for me is you, you must care about the students. You must, have, you must genuinely care about the students you're with. You need to go to the trouble to find out who they are and what they bring with them. You need to make efforts to engage them in exactly the way that you were talking about. And I think the other really critical thing that I've come to think of is really very important is checking that they are understanding all the time as you go. It seems to me to be pretty basic. And this is the other thing that some of my graduates that I was working with in some research made clear to me. It's not enough to care You've got to show the students that you care. You've got to let them know that you really care. You've got to be explicit and articulate about that. Now again, in early childhood, I'm sure that's not a problem. But I think the older the students become, the less likely we are to be explicit about showing them that we care and telling them that we care. And for me, with Stand and Deliver, the Heme Escalante example, he did that beautifully. Oh, there's Pinky giving me a wrap-up notice, obviously. You've got to get your timing right too, right? So I think the showing, to be, being explicit, showing students that you care is really important. I think it is really important that you either make or take your place within the institution that you work. And I think for me, it's really important to be a team player, that the best teaching I've ever done has been team teaching, where I've worked with a group of people and we've designed together and we've fought together over issues and we've argued and we've gone in and taught and we've looked at things from different angles, we've, we've looked at assessment. That's been by far the most exciting teaching that I've ever done. And I think the other thing is about being conscious of taking your place in a community as well. Wherever you teach, in Australia, there's a bit of a tradition sometimes. If teachers are appointed to a place that's a bit out of the way, they'll sometimes go there and travel backwards and forwards from where they live. And the local people really, the, the children and the families of the children don't like that at all because it's as though the teacher is separating themselves from the community completely. So I think somehow explicitly showing that you're connected with the community that you're teaching in is a really important issue. And increasingly, and particularly, I thought in Singapore, is the sense that you are part of the world, that you're really one of the hubs of the world. So sharing that with the children that you teach, I think is really important, that you know that you're part of that. And you won't be surprised 
that the last one I put in is to take very good care of yourself and to be as happy as you can. And that was the advice that, again, one of my students, we learned from our students, don't we, that one of my students, one of the graduates that I saw who I admire enormously as a teacher and has worked in some extremely difficult contexts with children. When I said to her, Helen, what's the answer to this question? What's the good teacher? She says, go in every day being as happy as you can. What a simple recipe. <laughs> so on that simple note, I'm going to stop and say thank you so much for being such a lovely, attentive group of people to have spent two hours with on a, in a freezing room on a Wednesday night. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming along and good luck with being a teacher. I'm sorry I wasn't able to give you, to be a good teacher, you have to do this, this and this, and I can't give you stamps to say you've passed. But thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Denise Dillon. I'm from the School of Psychology from the Department of Psychology in the School of Arts and Social Sciences. And so Kay is the Associate Dean of Course of Teaching and Learning Development. And we're very appreciative of having her as part of our team. <laughs> and I would like to thank you very much. Thank you. And this is, it's time for you. So your oh, final point, taking time. care of yourself. It's an easy yeah. guide wow. to you. taking care of yourself by our very own Margaret Carter. Oh, and we're you. very appreciative of both of you. So thank you, Margaret, for arranging it. Oh, thank you, Kay. It's a sign coming. <laughs> by Thanks, the author. That's and we much appreciate having Kay coming, as I, I'm sure you can all appreciate now, because we had a great cook's tour, and you've been a wonderful guide, taking us through a local's experience. Yeah. In that Thank sense. You. That's lovely. Thanks. Very Thank much. you all. Thank you. I think there's a cup of tea to go warm up. Go outside and thaw. <laughs> Zumba for our team building in the last <laughs> you are summer. You are Singapore high. <laughs>